Let's take a look at another random emergency light from AliExpress. And this one was notable for claiming that it used nickel cadmium cells. I think this one cost about $5. And, well, let's give it a test. What's it say in the back? LED emergency light, 100 to 240 volts, lumen intensity, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, battery NICAD, uh, 3.6 volts, 300 milliamp power. Let's test this. Let's bring in the power analyzer and put it on test and see what sort of power it draws in standby. And then we'll open it up and we'll take a look at the circuitry as we usually do. So I'm going to stuff these into the anti. I'm going to plug it in. Okay. Uh, no indicator that it's charging, which is a shame. Uh, it says 0.7, well, let's say 0.8 watts standby power. 79 milliamps is quite high, and a power factor that's measurable 0 0.039, that kind of suggests it is a capacitive dropper again. What happens when we unplug it? Oh, it does light. That's good. Okay. Right, so let's open it up. The first thing I'm noticing here is it does have a clip-on bezel, which is quite smart. I know this is a fairly standard thing for electrical fitments. Everything seems to be in from the front. Okay. Screwdriver. Is this going to come out here? What about from the back? No. From here. Well, that's a start. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. It's worth mentioning at this point in time that I don't necessarily recommend buying these things. You certainly can't use them in a commercial environment. Is this screwed in? It's not helpful that it's lit and it's quite dazzling. I shall bang it on my hand. Oh, there we go, there we go. So it is using nickel cadmium batteries now it wasn't lit when i got it what happens if you unplug it and plug it in it doesn't immediately light when you plug it in that's interesting okay uh, there's the dropper capacitor i should have checked for a discharge resistor there is a discharge resistor um wrecked far i'll take a picture of this and we can explore the circuitry together one moment please Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. So I shall zoom down this. Now, this thing doesn't fulfill many requirements for the commercial requirements for emergency lights, certainly here in the UK, which is that there should be an indicator showing it's charging. I don't know why they didn't add one on it. It would have been so simple to do, but they didn't do that. And also, it has to last for a minimum of three hours. Um, from the reviews I was reading on this, they were, and from some of the documentation, it's roughly about an hour you get out of it. But it is running the LEDs quite hard. Well, without any current limiting, which is strange. So, let's take a look at the circuit board. The incoming supply goes to this onboard. It, well, it's got a position for a fuse down here, but there is just a track underneath. That is the fuse. And it goes to the bridge rectifier. The other end goes over here and goes through this capacitive dropper which is a quite a high value, one microfarad. That's probably because it's like universal voltage, 100 to 240 volts. In uh, 220 upwards countries, you could probably change the value of this capacitor to, to half that. Uh, this is the hottest component on the circuit board. I took the thermal imaging camera to it. It's the discharge resistor across that because they've chosen 220k, which is it's usually 470k better or a megohm. Anyway, here's the bridge rectifier, and just like the last one I looked at, it's got a resistor across it and then a simple um, Zener shunt. The circuitry is in a way very similar to the previous emergency light I looked at, but it is also different. I also get the feeling this might have possibly been designed to also be used with uh, lithium cells, but I'm not sure. Um, there is a resistor here for limiting current. There is a transistor that is uh, forming a, well, tell you what, I'll show you the schematic, but this transistor here is a voltage cap for the nic nickel cadmium pack. And then these three transistors are for switching on the LEDs. This one switches on the LEDs directly, and the other two are part of the filtering to make sure it only comes on when there's a power cut. And also, so that if you actually disconnect it and plug the lights in, I think I've demonstrated this before, it won't light until it's had power. And then 
it will light once the power has been applied and then broken. Let's take a look at the schematic. The schematic is in two parts, two installments here. Let me just zoom up in it. So here's the main power supply section in it. There is the one microfarad, 400 volt uh, dropper capacitor with a 220k smoke and hot resistor across it. There's a bridge rectifier. There's a little resistor to make sure that when the power fails, the voltage drops quite quickly and the emergency lights come on. Uh, there is a 100 microfarad, 35 volt capacitor, and then there's a 6.2 volt Zener diode with a 10 ohm resistor in series with it. That gave a supply volt up here roughly about 7 volts. I measured the voltage drop across this resistor, which is the main currently emitting resistor for the battery charging. I measured it at um, 1 volt, which gives 50 milliamps current into the, the battery pack. Here's the battery charger. It's very similar to previous circuit. It's a uh, voltage regulator based on a standard NPN transistor. It's got a reference voltage via this resistor and this Zener diode, basically applying a fixed voltage to the base of this transistor. And then when this comes within about 0.6 volts of that, then the current through the resistor starts slowing down because it needs to be um, a, it needs to be a low enough voltage here that the transistor can be biased on. So there are effectively uh, three supply rails. There's the common zero volt rail. There's the battery plus, which I've colored orange. That's important. And the main plus, which I've colored red. That's also important. So this is the uh, power supply positive. This is the battery positive. And then we get the common zero volt. On to the next page. And this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. The supply comes via a diode. The diode then has a sort of couple of voltage dividers. And I think the best way to show this is to work backwards here. So here's the battery supply voltage, and there is a PNP transistor. Now, the PNP transistor switches up to the positive rail, unlike the NPN, which is designed to switch down to the negative rail. And to turn a PNP transistor on, you have to take its base negative. So this resistor here, the 27K, is normally pulling a slight bias positive, keeping this transistor turned off and the LEDs turned off. This LED represents all 12 LEDs in that panel. This transistor is the one that is used to turn on this transistor because when this transistor's on, it pulls the base via this 1K resistor to the zero volt rail and that then turns that transistor on the LEDs light. But this transistor here is keeping that transistor off because when the power supply is present, the voltage divider here turns this transistor on. This transistor then shunts that divider, which turns this transistor off. And then because this transistor is off, that transistor is pulled up to the positive and it will stay off too. However, when the power fails, um, there are two dividers here. One is biased with a 3K and 1K, and there's one with two 3Ks. And that means that this transistor will turn off as the voltage drops very... It drops quickly, but it does drop in a ramp as the electrolytic capacitor discharges. But this transistor will turn off very briefly before this one. And when this transistor turns off very briefly before that one, that means that with the supply left at that, the voltage left, it can still turn this transistor on, which then turns this transistor on and turns the LEDs on. But at that point, it also has a divider across the LEDs with a tap going via a diode to the base of this transistor. And what that means is that this transistor will now be latched on by the this transistor here. So it's basically a self-latching circuit. But it gets a bit more complicated than that because when the voltage drops too low on the LED circuit, they've chosen the value of these resistors so that when it drops low enough, um, the base current reduces, that reduces the current in this base and it causes an avalanche effect and it will just shut off. So basically speaking, instead of just fading away and draining the batteries right down to zero, it will effectively um, just suddenly turn off. And uh, the only way you'll be able to get it back on again is to plug it into the mains again and let it charge up to a decent level. Um, technically speaking, even in standby, even with this fairly high value resistor, you're going to get a slight current discharge across those batteries, though. But that's it. It's fairly complicated. 
as I say, it's it's novel. It's worth looking at. The circuitry is quite clever. I, I, I was trying to explain this, but so much happens simultaneously at once with this circuitry that you, it's quite hard to explain in a logical manner. Uh, but there we have it. It's a neat little module. It's totally not compliant with UK commercial regulations. Um, things that I'd recommend, this resistor here, the discharge resistor across this capacitor, I would tap a bigger resistor across there, like one megohm, just because that is getting quite hot. It's a very small resistor. And I'd also change this one microfarad capacitor in the UK and other 220 volt plus countries to that 470 microfarad, which will reduce the power dissipation in the whole circuit, and it means the batteries will charge a bit slower. I would estimate, based on these being 330 milliamp per pack and that initial test current of 50 milliamps, I would say that uh, this will take about six or seven hours to charge, but they do say it takes two days to charge. Maybe that's the um, America they're talking about, where the lower mains voltage across the uh, capacitor here will result in just lower charge current. But that's it. It's an interesting circuit. Quite tricky to reverse engineer, but well worth exploring. Quite an interesting and novel design.